That's Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jane's little daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They came to Sunday school. Well, you know, for Father mm -hmm. Christmas. No, I don't see her now. preacher to arrive. <laughs> Our brother King was delayed, had to um, turn back and get something. So um, anyway, he's preaching today, but he just asked me to leave the service because um, on tomorrow he's going to hospital for some tests. So he's just, um, he asked me to do this part of the service. So it's not me again. <laughs> Getting boring, isn't it? Seeing me up here all the time. <laughs> oh, Lord bless you and trust that you'll enjoy the service today as we share and we, as we praise the Lord as we come into his presence. The scripture that uh, Ken gave, he did all the choruses and everything like that. Isaiah 55 verse 6, as you see, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he is near. I think you can even call upon him when he feels far away. Because he's as close as that. He never forgets us. He knows everything about us. He knows when we're here. Call upon him and he will answer. Amen. Welcome, King. <laughs> You, you had us worried. <laughs> <laughs> A special welcome to Elaine and Ralph and Nathan. Lovely to see you again. A long time. Um, Elaine's been staying away because she's looking pretty swell. <laughs> God is good. Amen. It was lovely to have you with us and trust that you'll enjoy the service as we share today. We're going to start with the hymn, and the hymn is Sweet Will of God. It's a very soft, quiet hymn, and that's what we need to do, is to quiet in our hearts, and just to rest in Him. And maybe, and we'll do that, just 
just concentrate on me. Put aside everything, all the problems, delays, and just concentrate on him. My stubborn will has, has lost, has yielded. Let's stand as we sing. <clears throat>
That's our prayer. Mm. That Holy Spirit would just hold us close to you. That we would have that special relationship with you this morning. Mm. As we gather together as a family of God. Thank you. To worship you and to praise you. And as we praise you, Lord, we welcome you into our midst. Mm. That we can rejoice in you. And we pray that you'll rejoice in us as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's break forth into joy. Break forth into joy, oh my soul. Break forth into joy.
Sister Woody, would you pray for us this morning? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Our loving Heavenly Father, how thankful we are to be here this morning in the same day. We come, Lord, with hearts full of gratitude of what you do for us, yes, Jesus. What you've given us, Lord. We bless you. We bless you for our salvation and that you gave so freely to each one of us. And this morning, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for protecting us. Yes, thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. We lift up your name this morning. Truly, Lord, thou art great and great to be praised. And we come before you this morning in all humility, asking, Lord Jesus, that should there be anything within us, Lord, that is displeasing to you, we ask, Lord Jesus, for it to be removed. Amen. Amen. And so we bless you this morning, Lord, and we ask that as our brother gives the message, Lord, that it will find a resting place within our hearts. And that we'll keep it with us every day of this coming week, Lord. We bless you for those that are here. And Lord, we pray for those to the Lord. And we thank you and bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, but I was going to teach you today. It's more interesting. I'm going to teach you today. Here we go. Okay. 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 I don't know if anybody else would like to share anything. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of you who. Um, uh, pray for my brother Alan, Blake Shepherd. Uh, three years ago, he had his leg amputated. We say he got his trust Jesus. And now we just pray that uh, with the physiotherapy he's got to get, that he'll be able to manage quickly and um, he'll be, get, be getting going again just like us. I also want to pray, uh, I also want you to lift up my sister in Lady Smith, Cuckoo Stupid She. She's going to decay on chemo tablets near Christmas time, so we're not going down there now. Uh, she's been separated from her husband, she's got a son of her daughter uh, because of the COVID and whatever, and I think because of the aircon there, it's better for her. But just lift her up in prayer. And for my brother in law, uh, Johan van der Meijer, he's on oxygen with a mask at night. In the daytime, he's on another mask with the one in the nose. Um, he's uh, just prayed for my sister as well for strength for her, because they fight at night time because he doesn't like this mask. It makes him nauseous at night. His um, uh, heart rate should be five, and it's 95. So just please lift him up in prayer, and I thank you for all your covetousness, and thank you for praying for me. At least today I can hear after three weeks. Praise the Lord for that. And praise the Lord also. Uh, they, ret they retired near the end of August. They need to call me back on the 12th of October to work three days a week. So I just pray that it'll keep going. Because I've tried to go to the joy if six and a half hours later on Thursday. Still not even one in there. So <laughs> thank the Lord for the work I've got. Everybody. Um, as you know, we haven't been here for a little while. Um, you know, lockdown was very tough, but something really wonderful came out of it. Um, we are now 22 weeks pregnant with our little boy, and I just want to praise and thank the Lord for that. He's healthy and hopefully happy. <laughs> We 
heard a lovely testimony yesterday, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, a lady was hijacked with guys with a, with a gun and so on. Take, you know, give us your wallet, give us this and that. And the wedding ring, and she started to pray, and then she started to pray in tongues. And apparently these guys got very flustered and very confused. They managed to get in the booth and get her son's school bag, and then they were going, and she called them back. She said, hey, the gun is on the lap. You forgot this. <laughs> and off they went. And in the booth, they found her, she found her wedding ring. Obviously, because they were so flustered, they actually dropped the wedding ring. But I just thought that was just such a wonderful testimony. That, you know, who knows how God's going to use that? And it reminded me of a testimony we heard donkeys years ago of somebody who was, was a mud, I think, and she went, I'm covered all over with feathers. Mm. And they ran away. <laughs> that was what he shall cover me with his feathers yes. under his wing shall not trust. And well, I thought, God's all in the business of covering you. Yeah. 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 Can you want that thing as well? Oh, when I'm finished. Yeah, um, I told all the people a testimony of, um, of uh, uh, Tony Delaportis about the man that tried to commit suicide and then uh, they stole his car. <laughs> but um, the same night that I was there, another guy stood up and he said they were in Russia and they were spreading the word out there with these little Bibles of theirs. And they used to go from village to village. And when they got, uh, when, when they, every time they, they got to a certain village, the people would say, you must go to that side. Go to that, go to that. Also that side, there's another village. So they would go from village to village, and they came to this one village, and uh, everything stopped. And they said, nothing that side. They said, no, the end of the world. Nothing that side. <laughs> so God's word really gets friends. All over the world. Thanks, praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Go on there. Yeah. I'm just going to play some. We've gone shot over the video, but the sound will come through. That's the little piece. If we get caught, what will happen to me? They said, oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours and we'll go to prison for three years. If you're kidding, how many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. No way. I looked at it and I said, you 22. They were sitting there, all 22 of them, and I they were sitting there, all 22 of them, and I looked around and I said, now if we get caught, what will happen to me? They said, Oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours and we'll go to prison for three years. How many of you have been in prison for your faith? Out of 22, 18 raised their hands. No way. I looked at him and I said, you, you 22 people, how many people do you oversee? Because they were all of these small group leaders, underground church leaders in the non province. I said, how many, if you counted up all the people under your jurisdiction, how many would it be? And they counted them up. And they said, a little over 20 million. I said, what? See, we forget there's 1.3 billion people in China. This is crazy. Well, I had 15 Bibles and I passed them out. Obviously, seven didn't get them. And I said, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter 1 and we're going to read it. And just then, one lady handed hers to somebody next to her. And I thought, hmm, interesting. Well, we turned there anyway, and as we started reading it, I understood why she gave it away. She had memorized the whole thing. She just recited the whole chapter. When it was done, I went over to her at a break and I said, you, you, you recited the whole chapter. She said, oh, yes, I've memorized many chapters. I said, where did you memorize the chapter? She said, in prison. I said, you had much time in prison. So I said, but don't they confiscate the Bible? She said, yes. So people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper and they bring it in. So I said, but then if they find that piece of paper on you, won't they confiscate that? She said, oh yes, 
That's why you memorize it as fast as you can. Because even though they can take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. Wow. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when I was done, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. You guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? I said, you know, when you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America, we can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big incredulous eyes looked at me and I said, well, why? <laughs> I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. God is good. God is good. Um, before we take up the offering, I just want to mention to you again, in two weeks' time on the 20th, we'll be having our carol service. And as always, we'd like you to take part. Your service, not just ours, not just us standing up here and reading scriptures and things like that. So, what Jill wrote in the November newsletter, I want to read to you, maybe you remember it. Um, as part of our special service, we would like to invite you to share your testimony of gratitude and thanks to the Lord for the way He has kept you during this very challenging year. And my, what a challenging year we've had. And how God has kept and I'm sure ministered to each one of you in a special way. So I want to ask if you'd like to take part in that. That you just let us know. Quite soon, because it's only two weeks before we have the service. Um, we'd love to hear short testimony or uh, if, in fact, if you want to share something, if you want to read a poem or whatever. Let us know so we can put it into the service. And uh, it's on the 20th. I mean, the carol service is always lovely. Yeah. It's a pity we only see carols once a year. Yeah. Um, but it's a special service. So come with your heart. Come and share what God has done for you. And, and I think the folk overseas that also watch our service, if you've got anything to share, let us have it. Send it through on WhatsApp or email, and we'd love to share it with you and with us. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Let's take up the offering. Uh, Adam, would you do this?
things that have been put into the basket. Lord, please bless those that gave and an extra blessing that those that didn't. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to say you're turning your hymn book. <laughs> Maybe we could, I don't know. I was wondering if we each had a hymn book and we sing our hymn when you leave, you leave your hymn book on the, on the chair. And then we could leave it there for the whole week and all the hookers will disappear. <laughs> Especially when you come and spray the, the, the chairs as we do every week. Maybe. We could do it that way, I mean. Or if you sit in the same place every week. So nobody else is going to take your hymn book. Or put your name on it. <laughs> Maybe we could do that. Eh? Alright. Let's stand we're going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And then Ken will minister to us. We bless you for your holy word, Lord. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's precious to us, Lord. And we love thy word with all our hearts. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you that we have this word to read, Lord. Help us to use it every day as a road map on our way to our eternal home. 
We exalted the Lord, I pray, this morning. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead, that you would guide, that you would anoint, I pray, this morning. As the word goes forth this morning, that the people will learn to lean upon thee, Lord, in these days that we are walking in. It's not going to become easier. We know it's going to become harder. And the harder the gets, the more we're going to lean. Therefore, we thank you this morning that we have you, our precious Heavenly Father. Bless thy word unto thy, to thy name, I pray. And glorify thy word this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Mrs. And once again, thanks to them. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Please? Joe? I just, um, you know, I'm, when I'm cleaning my glasses, I just want to say to you, on Sunday as we went home, this lady came up to my car with a face mask on, started talking to me, chatting away, but in myself, I was saying to myself, who is this woman? just didn't recognize her. And she was asking me all about my new car and how do you like the new car? And I'm happy. I said, yeah. But uh, this is also not, uh, this I don't like about the car. This I don't like about the car. And this I like about the car. And I was giving away all the secrets of this of the car. And the next moment, I saw just <laughs> Coming towards her, I was talking to Jan. I didn't recognize Jan. <laughs> so she must probably went to him and said, Yeah, Ken is not happy with your the class as you sell. <laughs> so my policy is Jan. <laughs> Apologize to Justin. Too. Yes, Justin. Yeah. It's a very good call. Yeah. Um. Can we get a to more of you? We're going to go out some more of you. So okay. Okay. Um. <coughs> I just didn't know what to preach today. And the Lord laid upon my heart a sermon that I preached 20 years ago, what he said. When our sister Saul and our late pastor went overseas. A sermon that made a very great impact on some of the people in the church where my sister What's her name, Liv? Dorothy Taylor. When I last saw her, she came to me and said, Ken, that sermon you preached so many years ago is still in my heart. I still remember it. So I thought, oh, how easy now. Now I don't need much fun. Just going to scratch out my old one. And I just go through it. Then, yes. Of course, 20 years, a long time. And we moved <laughs> since then and it disappeared. 
Mm. I couldn't find it. <laughs> then I thought, oh, maybe. Those years we used to burn it onto the CDs, remember? I thought, maybe it's dead. Oh, and I scratched it on all CDs. Now I couldn't find a CD with so much on it. I said, Lord, I said, oh, I can't remember it again. I have to start all over again. So I started from scratch. It's not the same, exactly the same. I think that's 20 years ago. But uh, in a way, it's there. It's to do with leaning. It comes from the Songs of Solomon. Chapter 8, verse 5. And it's just the first couple of words that I want to read to you. It says, who is first coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Solomon, uh, Songs of Solomon 8, verse 5. Yeah, when I met Willie, she was mad about the comrade. She used to watch the comrades faithfully every year. And uh, you know, I started getting jealous of her watching this. I, uh, I started thinking to myself, I'm going to also turn. And then something said to me, just go and lie down, that feeling will go away. <laughs> Which I did. <laughs> Amen. There go. But thankfully she used to watch and uh, of course her son used to run. He ran something like six or seven comrades. And she loved watching it from morning to close to God. But I used to love watching the last half of it. You know, um, in the olden days, or shall I say, a couple of years back, you could still help one another over the finishing line. I even saw that guy that was uh, um, sponsored by Creepy Crawley that crawled over the, the, yeah. the finishing line. Uh, but the way, the camaraderie, yeah. at the end, how they would lean upon one another and they would drag their buddies across the line. Yeah. And, 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 and they wouldn't leave him behind. No. no. With that constant help, assistance. Come, come. Lean on me. Lean on me. You'll get there. Come, come. Now the people used to go mad. Oh, shopping. <clears throat> reminds of, reminds me of all. The great God, huh? that's so good to us. And as I preach a sermon this morning, may you be blessed by it. Every soul that journeys towards heaven has Jesus as a companion, for he will never allow any pilgrim to the new Jerusalem to travel unattended. You see, Jesus is with us in sympathy. For he has trodden every step of the way before us, whatever our temptations, he has been tempted in the same way. Whatever our afflictions, he's been afflicted the same way. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities, having been tempted in all points, like as we are. But not only is Jesus near us in sympathy alone, but he is with us to also render practical assistance. And by this I mean, when we least perceive him, he's often closest to us. And we need not to be afraid. It is no fiction. It is no dream. It's no piece of imagination that Christ is really with his people. For Matthew 28 verse 20 says to me, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. 
And then he says again, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. In every step of this pilgrimage, from the wicked gate of repentance, up to the pearly gate which admits the perfect into paradise, Jesus Christ, in sympathy of heart, and in actual presence of help, is very near to his people. Be this the pilgrim's encouragement this morning, that it be his song in the morning and prayer in the night, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me, I am his brother. If Jesus has to say to us today, my child, I want you to go on a pilgrimage, but I will be with you wherever you go. I believe in my heart that we will cry out through floods or flames. If you, dear Lord, lead the way, we will follow you wherever you go. Lead the way, O crucified, let us see your footprints in the sand. And should the path wind up to the hill of difficulty or descend into the valley of humili humiliation, it will be the best road that any person has ever walked on. So be full of courage this morning, especially those pilgrims who have crisscrossed the veil of tears, you come up from the wilderness in dear com company, for one like unto the Son of God is at your side. Be sure of that this morning. For one like unto the Son of God is at your side. Now, so we're all back for the minute. <laughs> Note the title that is given to the companion of the spouse, my beloved. My beloved. For indeed, he is of whom the song here speaks, beloved above all others. He was the beloved of his father, or even the earth was. He was declared to be the, the, uh, the Lord's beloved in the waters of Jordan. And at other times, when out of the excellent glory there came this voice, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Beloved of his father, now our Jesus sits forever glorious at God's right hand. Jesus is the beloved of every saint and angel, angel that crowd around the, the throne, casting their crowns before his feet, lifting up their ceaseless hymns to him. The angels are not merely servants, my brothers and sisters, who obey because they must, but reverent admirers who serve because they love him. He is the beloved of every being of pure heart and holy mind. The host triumphant, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, sing words like, My beloved is mine, and I am his. His banner over me is love. He's all my salvation and all my desire. Other refuge have I none. My soul in a utter helplessness, entirely upon it, entirely lean upon it. We know now that the pilgrim has a dear companion, but much of the blessedness of the text lies in her posture. 
towards him. Who is this coming up from the wilderness leading upon a beloved? The posture is that of leaning. She's leaning. His relationship to her is that of the divine supporter. Well, what does this leaning mean? First of all, we must remember that there can be no leaning on another unless we believe in that other person's presence and nearness. A man does not lean on a stick that is not in his hand. Nor can we lean on that which is far off and unapproachable. The instinct which leads us to uh, uh, preserve our right, uh, uprightness would not permit us to lean on a shadow or a nothing. It is your duty as a child of God to, if you want to be like the wondrous woman in our text, to seek to be conscious of the presence of Christ. It is your duty. It is true that your senses cannot observe him, but your senses are less to be relied upon than your faith. For senses may be mistaken, but the faith of God's elect does not wander. God makes that which faith depends upon to be more real than anything which the senses can perceive. Christ Jesus is with you. Though ye hear not his voice, and see not his face, he is with you. He is with you. Now it's a delightful help to us in believing that Christ is not only with us, but to an intense degree he is also near us. A sympathizing, practical friend, so near entering into our sorrows, sharing in our crosses, taking a part with us in all the battles of life. He's so near that he pours his counsel right into your heart. And when your secret trouble troubles cannot be shared with any person, it is shared with him. He is so near that when his heart's inmost hurts, your heart's inmost hurts must be locked up to all other sympathies. Those hurts and pains are all open to his tenderness. He's so near to you that he lives in you and he abides in you and you abide in him. Listen to these words of comfort this morning. A sacred unity exists between you and Him, so that you drink of His cup and are baptized with His baptism, and in all your sorrows and afflictions, He takes His share in it. I'm going to say that again. A sacred unity exists between you and Him, so that you drink of his cup and are baptized with his baptism and in all your sorrows and afflictions he takes his share in it. Makes me think of that secular song, You'll Never Walk Alone, or was it a Christian song? You'll never walk alone. To lean can also be looked at as the throwing of one's weight from oneself onto another. In this case, ours, we do it upon our Savior, Jesus, the great substitute soul shoulders. And when we completely unloaded ourselves and cast all our matters upon Him and started living in the power and strength of God, then, and only then, do we stop relying on our own strength? To leave everything that troubles you 
with the one who loves you better than you can love yourself. To leave all that depresses you with him whose wisdom and whose power are more than a match for all emergencies. Here in this wisdom, never try to stand alone on your own strength. Never trust in the arm of flesh, for they will fail you. But make your ever blessed Lord Jesus the leading place of your whole soul, casting every burden upon him who is able to bear it. And this is what I think what the meaning is here about the word meaning. Let's take some time to stand still and think what the reason was for her, leave, for her to leave. First of all, we must remember that she was a pilgrim. And that is one of the reasons that she leaned on her beloved, because she was weak. Do you want for one moment believe that strength can be? Which is clear proof to us that she was weak and she showed it openly by leaning on her beloved. I do believe that as long as we have a grain of self-sufficiency, we will never trust completely in the all-sufficient one. While there is anything of self left, we prefer to feed on it, and only then, at last, the moldy bread becomes too sour for eating, and even the husks that the swine do eat are such as cannot fill our belly. It is only then that we humbly ask for the bread of heaven to satisfy us. Your weakness is your strength. Your strength is your weakness. Be nothing. Be nothing. For only so can you be anything. Be poor in spirit, for only so can you be rich towards God. The spouse leaned before she was weak. And so you will have the right to leave when you find yourself to be weak. Another reason she leaned on the beloved was because the way was long. She had been going through the wilderness and she began to tire and therefore she leaned. And so we find at times that the road on which we are traveling ought to be long. Some of us have been saved and born again for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. Some here in this house have been serving for 60 years, longer. This is a long time in which to be tempted and tried. For sin is mighty and the flesh is weak. If one good rush could win the race, the most of us would strain every nerve. But to tuck on year after year, when the novelty is gone, and when there comes another sort of novelty, fresh temptation, new allurements, which is strange to us, we know that to win the crown is by leaning on our beloved to hear the master's voice one day say, well done, good and faithful servant. If we can learn to lead, we shall hold on. Faith casting herself upon the power of her Lord never grows exhausted. She's like the eagle when it renews its youth. She drinks from the foundation head of all vitality, and her lost energy comes back to her. Such a soul becomes stronger and stronger. Though she had to live the life of a Methuselah, Myriads of years would not exhaust her 
for she has learned to cause that which exhausts upon him who is inexhaustible. Another reason she did, but because the road was dangerous. You see, the wilderness is not at all a safe place for a pilgrim, for it is there where the lion growls and the howl of the wolf is heard. But she leaned on her beloved and she felt safe and secure. Just remember this morning, if the sheep fears the wolf, he will be better off by keeping close to the shepherd. For then the shepherd's rod and staff will drive the wolf away. There is no safety for us except in close communion with Christ. Remember that. Every step you get away from Jesus, your danger doubles. And when you have lost the sense of his sacred presence, your danger is at its maximum. Then I came with time of famine. You may rise up weary and sit at night and eat the bread of carefulness and yet have no prosperity. You may keep the city and the watchman may pass along the wall each hour of the night and yet it may be taken by a surprise as that. But blessed is he that trusts in the Lord. For neither will his city be destroyed, nor will famine come to his land. Or if it does, in famine he will be fed. And in the days of peril, the angels shall keep watch and ward about him. Lean upon the beloved. Stay close to him, for we know that the way is dangerous. Again, we lean on the she leaned on the beloved because her route was ascending. Who is this coming up? She was ascending. The Christian's way is up. He never looks back at the old pleasures of the world. He's not satisfied with graces to which he has reached, but up. It is not good if you don't desire to be better. You know not the light if you do not desire more light. The heavenly way is upward. Upward. This is the way to heaven. You see, the tendency of man's nature is downward. How soon we descend and how likely is our soul from a most elevated condition to sink back into the dull dead level of a natural estate. If we are to go up, we must lean. The more we lean, the more truly we our soul. The more we lean, the more truly we cast the weight of our spiritual wrestling, spiritual struggling, and spiritual growth upon Him, the more surely will we gain the wrestling, the struggling, and the growth. Depend as much for growth in grace upon Christ as for the pardon of sin. He is made of God unto you sanctification as well as redemption. Look for sanctification through the blood, for it is a purifier as well as a partner. The same blood which puts away the guilt of sin is by the Holy Ghost applied as a blood of sprinkling. To put away from us the reigning power of sin over us.
last re reason for the spouse leaning upon her beloved was because she felt sure that they were strong enough to bear away. He upon whom she leaned was no other than God over all blessed forever, who cannot fail nor be discouraged. She also leaned because she, he was her beloved. She would have felt it unwise, I think, to lean if she was not if he was he was not mighty. She would have been afraid to lean. If this had not been if he had not been dear to her. So it is. The more you love, the more you trust. And the more you trust, the more you love. I want you to listen to this. These twin graces of faith and hope live and flourish together. These twin graces of faith and hope live and flourish together. Now in closing, let us stand still for a while at the person and the pedigree of her who lead upon her beloved. The text says, who is this? What made them inquire? By saying, who is this? I'll tell you who these people are that are required. It's those unbelievers, those mockers, those atheists, those who have turned their backs on him and refused to acknowledge his, his existence. It was them who were so astonished to see her looking so happy and so little wearied after what she went through. Nothing, and I will say it again, nothing, amazes the world more than genuine Christian joy. Amen. Amen. Holy peace in disturbing time is a puzzle to the ungodly. And when they hear the righteous say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, Amen. therefore will not we fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, or they hear us sing, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods. They say one to another, where did these people learn to be such happy children? Little do they know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Praise Him. So, who then is this that leans on her beloved? I'll tell you, her name was once called Outcast, whom no man desired after. But according to this old book, her name is now Zephzibah, for the Lord delights in her. The name of the soul that trusts in God and finds peace in so doing was by nature a name of shame and sin. We were to follow from God, even as others. And if any soul is brought to trust in Christ, it is not from any natural goodness in it or any inborn tendency towards us trusting. It's because grace has brought a wondrous transformation and God the Holy Ghost has made those who were not a people to be called the people of God. She who today joyously trusts in her God was once a weeping Hannah, a woman of a sorrowful spirit, but now her soul rejoices in the Lord, for he has remembered her low estate. She who is here spoken of is a Ruth. She came from the far, she left the land of birth, and she has entered into union with the Lord and his people. For the cry, her cry is, Where thou dwellest, I will dwell. Thy people shall be my people. 
Thy God shall be my God. You see, she was once a stranger, but now she's an Israelite. In short, the soul that leans upon God consistently every day and casts her care upon Him is one of a princely race. She is being begotten into the family of God. The blood imperial flows within her veins. And in the day when the crowns of princes and of emperors will melt into the common dust to where, to where they belong, the crown, jewel, and the diadems of these believing souls will glitter with immortal splendor in the kingdom of God forever and forever and forever and forever. The Lord bless us. And the Lord teach us that sacred art of dependence on the beloved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Uh, brother, brother Eric, would you just, just say a word of prayer, please, for us? Well, Jesus, this morning there are none so glad as us, the redeemed. We could not save ourselves, could not rescue ourselves from our sin and degradation. We're rescued by a wonderful Redeemer, our beloved. And so, Lord, we thank you for this message of encouragement that we should lean on our precious Saviour, on our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is not a leaning unto weakness, but a leaning, Lord, unto commitment, a leaning in a bond that is so close and so sure that you have assured us of eternal life. And so, Lord, as we continue in our days ahead, in our weeks and the years, even as this year has been so hard, I ask that each one of us, Lord, would learn once again to lean on our beloved. Yes, for he is sure and steadfast forever, the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your encouragement. And we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that watches over each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We need to pray for our brother because he's going to hospital tomorrow for tests and things. So I'd like to ask Eric and uh, Alan, Alan and uh, Justin, please come this. Same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That has quickened our brother Ken's mortal body now, Lord, and we ask him that in every part of his body we would heal him and make him whole. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that he is going for assessments of angina and diabetes. But Lord, we give you honor and glory that there is healing. That the doctor should find him well and whole, even as you make him whole. This is our prayer today, Lord Jesus. Strengthen our brother. Thank you, Lord, that he came to minister to us today. Lift him up, Lord Jesus, and renew him from within, that his strength he might mount up, Lord, 
as an Amen. eagle upon the winds again. Praise in God. Jesus' name, we thank Praise you, Lord, God. for watching over it. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to pray to you. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Ages of no consequence in your hands. We ask now, Lord, that this arrhythmia would settle. That your Holy Spirit, Lord, would touch our brother Peter Cotton and heal him and make him every bit whole. Restore the strength of his heart and his body, Lord, to that of a young man. And we thank you even now as we lift our brother Peter up before you. For we know that it is your Holy Spirit that quickens the mortal body. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Savior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's stand and sing this little blessing. May God's blessing surround you each day. That's our prayer for you. Make it a prayer for each other as well. Don't just sing it this way. Sing it to each other. May God's blessing surround you each day.